Welcome back to Three the Hard Way TV. I got my boy from Chicago, Dion. You already know who I am. I am real checking in from the West Coast. On today's episode, we're talking about black businesses. And we got a local black business owner from Chicago here. We're gonna let her introduce herself and tell us tell us what she do. Hi everyone, I'm Tiffany Marie. I am the owner of East by Marie. Um, my business is a food restaurant, which is opening soon in Calumet Park, Illinois, which is south of Chicago. And I am 28 years old and I've been in business for three years now. Wow. Wow. Congratulations on that. Congratulations. Thank you. You're in a, you're in a tough field there in the food industry, huh? Yes. It get pretty well. Okay. Okay. So, so we just go hop right into it. So in the food industry, we know when you out and about you know we got all the big chain restaurants and everything what made what motivated you to decide to step out and go into the food industry okay so when i first started three to four years ago um three to four years ago is when i established that i wanted to start the actual business i've been cooking for probably 10 15 years i've always like watched my grandmother cook my mom cook um, I've always been in the kitchen with them, but when I was in college, I used to cook for all my friends and stuff, so they used to be like, you know, this is really good or whatever, so I was like, I should start selling it, start making money off of it, why not? So mm -hmm. I tried it out, you know, took pictures of the food, put it on Facebook, Instagram, and then people just started, you know, ordering it, going to my DMs, sending messages, um, how much is the food, how do we get the food, and I just took it from there, and it just continue to grow and I just continue to expand, grew more customers and a lot of people started finding out of me, gaining followers through Facebook, Instagram. And then I really started taking it serious, getting things creative as created as far as um advertising materials, um, shirts and everything. And then I made like a website and everything to, you know, make it more serious. And I just started getting more business from there. So it really started when I was in college. Okay. 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 Now you, you mentioned you mentioned that you were in college. Was that a, a culinary school or what were you going to school for? No, my degree is actually non-related to culinary. People always ask me, um, so how did you get into food? Because I have an English degree. I have a um bachelor's of english and then i have a okay. master's in creative writing um which is i'm gonna go into teaching later on once i get my restaurant more established but yeah the two those are two of my hobbies um which i made into you know something to make money out of it Got that old phone call. Yeah. Your phone was ringing? No, nah, it just froze. Okay, oh. go, go ahead. You were talking about your hobbies. Um, Yeah, I just continued to cook and it just turned one of my hobbies, which was cooking, into something serious, a business that I can make um, revenue from. Okay, okay okay now now tiffany you said that you started cooking so that meant can you cook cook or you could cook because you know some people throw on some hot dogs and they like i cook <laughs> you know what i'm saying this is this you know you go to them places and they be like gourmet hot dog <laughs> you know like <laughs> they gotta be like an iphone six yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Okay. Um, it keeps freezing. Is your Wi-Fi on? No. Can you turn it on? Do <coughs> I do a lot of editing? Man, yeah, shit. Well, I, be, I be just want the shit to be one take. Unless we go back out and come back in, but. No, because that story was too good in the beginning. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to mess that flow up. Okay.
Yep. So can you cook, cook, or what? Um. Well, the people they say I can cook, cook. They keep coming back for more, so I would think so. Um. But I cook a lot of different things. Um. My menu is very diverse. Um. I like mm -hmm. to mix a lot of different cultures. Um. I do seafood. Tacos, wraps, um, American food. I do some different kinds of Asian food. Um, some of the things I do, some of the things that are most popular are my jerk chicken egg rolls, Italian beef egg rolls. I got a new item. It's um, called sea rolls, which is a seafood egg roll, and it has crab meat and shrimp, and that's, like, real popular right now. So the people, they keep coming back for them. So I, I, can think, I think I can cook pretty well. Okay. That's actually a, a, a perfect answer because the only way you know if you could cook is just the customer coming back. Right, yeah. exactly. I got a lot of repeat customers. I have a question for you. Um, how, so how has your business been during, during the COVID-19 pandemic? Would you say it's uh, slowed down, it's, it's picked up, or it's, uh, it's, it's pretty steady? So as far as the um, pandemic, I would say that business has definitely increased a lot um i think the fact that i deliver it kind of gives me um more more of an advantage because a lot of people they don't want to go out they don't want to go pick up food and everything so i deliver to a lot of people during this time um my business has been booming a lot more during this time but also it's pretty much because i've been more consistent with my posting every day i've been open for sales every day and yeah, I'm just putting out a lot of new content and a lot of new items and everything. So people, they definitely coming back, coming back and just telling people about it. And I'm just getting, gaining a lot more customers through the word of mouth. And also, um, as far as like uh, it being related to like COVID-19, I think like a lot of people, a lot more people are on social media now. So that also is an advantage for my business because I'm putting out content on social media daily. So it's drawing in more people because people, they at home, they sit on social media all day. So they, they're going to see it. More people are going to follow it. More people are going to order food and everything. So I think it's, it gives me like more customers at this time. That's actually pretty good that you was able to adapt in a, a situation that took us all off guard. You know, when most restaurants kind of shut their doors or did like, in store pickup, you know, you found a way to keep your business thriving because a lot of, let's be honest, a lot of restaurants might not reopen after this, you know. So yeah, they, pre they predicted some around 30%. 30%. That's, the, that's the early prediction. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, that's, that's terrible. Yeah, I agree. You got to keep moving. Yeah, that's exactly. And you know what? The, the only downfall to this is um, I did get my restaurant space back in March, which is pretty much when this um, pandemic kind of kicked in and started affecting people. Um, I was supposed to open sometime in like June, early June or so, but you know, since now we in May now, it's probably going to get pushed back a few months. But yeah, that was the only thing that was a disadvantage on my end. It did slow down my process of getting my restaurant open. So that's the only thing that's affecting it. But I still have business. So that's that's great. That's a plus. Okay. So with this, uh, with your restaurant location that you bought in March, like right in the heart of the pandemic when they started shutting everything down, before that, did you have a location or were you where were you selling food from? No, I didn't have a location. Um, most of the cooking I do out of my home. Um, unless I get hired for certain events and things and I may cook in different places, um, different small venues for people who have events and things. But for the most part, it's just out of my home and I deliver and people pick it up and everything. Okay. So, so with your three years of being in business, um, what do you feel was some of your biggest obstacles that you faced so far? One of my biggest ob obstacles the main thing for me is um which kind of connects to my english degree um because i do a lot of reading with english or whatever a lot of people they do not read menus they don't read the menus they don't read anything you post it can be right in front of them jerk chicken tacos today five o'clock pick up only what time what time is the food gonna be ready <laughs> What are you selling today? What do you have? Where are you located? 
but all of this information is already presented on the menu. So it kind of, it's kind of frustrating to me and I kind of have to remain professional and respond appropriately to these people. So that's like one of the toughest things for me dealing with um, customers. But over the three years that I've been in business, I've grown to, you know, comprehend that people don't, people just don't read. And I just still have to conduct my business would, accordingly. Would, would you say that's an obstacle or that's just a pet peeve? Um, well, both because it's a, it's it's a, it's troubling for me because of my personality, the way I res I would respond to things. So that's something that's tough for me. And um something else I would say is trying to find out trying to find out what works best for me as far as techniques to in order for things to move um faster for me because it's, it's only me working by myself i don't have any other employees as of right now so i have to find like the best techniques that work for me um to make things go faster and to just make things like work the best for me okay my question my next question for you is um do you believe a business owner should be required to take some sort of um, customer service class or or course? You know, like they should have some type of plaque saying they completed. Um, even though you're you're going to be a small business, I know major corporations they have training classes, they have seminars, um, they have the do's and the don'ts. Should you, as a small business owner, should do you believe? it should be required for you to have some sort of, even if it's just like a four hour video the state gives you, do you think that should be a requirement? I would say no. Um, I, I'm not against it. I do believe it would be beneficial to those who may not have experience with customer service, um, operating a small business in the past, um, because a lot of people, they go into this as something new for them. They haven't really interacted with people before. They haven't experienced like the negative side of customers. So they really don't know how to react to certain things. Um, I believe that it should be a requirement if um, they have like repeat, repeating incidents where they are like unprofessional maybe. But just up front, like going into it, I don't think it should be a requirement because it's not necessary all the time. But if it okay. if it was if it was given from the beginning, maybe it pro could possibly correct some of those other things before they happen. Yes, I agree with that. Like I'm not against it. I don't think that it's not it's something that's not going to be beneficial to some business owners. It may help some business owners. Um, I mean, some, even if some people do take it, a lot of people, when they go through these courses for their uh, place of employment, they just, you know, click through it, click through it. They're not really learning nothing from it because they know they got to do it. You know, you got to sit there and go through it. So it's like some people, they just not for it. They like, I'm going to just click through it just to get it over with. So it might not even be beneficial to them because they might not even really take nothing in from it. Right. Okay. Okay. I got a question for you. So. In a world where it's competition, everywhere you look, everywhere you turn, people are starting new business or the big chains are taking a little business out. And every corner you go to is McDonald's or Cheesecake Factory or something like that. What separates you from other food places like you, especially in a city like Chicago, where it's like the food capital of the world? And like right. the food is great everywhere you go. So you, what, hear that? you hear that, New York, Chicago? <laughs> Not that little flat pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that pizza not that great. <laughs> I didn't <say> that. <laughs> so, like, what what separates you from other food businesses? So, when I went into this, my main goal was to stand out and be different from other people. So, all the items that I create on my menu, everything that I produce, um, you know, from my different recipes, it's not like other um businesses because it's like a, it's so many restaurants that have tacos it's so many restaurants that have the same burgers like the same chicken chicken meal 
So I try to stay away from what other people are doing. Like I said earlier, um, I like to mix different cultures. So for example, I, ha I would say that some of my dishes are unique because I like to mix cultures. Like I have egg rolls. Okay. So that's like jerk chicken egg rolls. That's like Asian food mixed with Caribbean food. So I try to do things that people haven't heard of. You know, I don't just go mixing up something just to, you know, make it something different when I, I really like study the different recipes, study different ingredients to create things and make sure they blend well together to put out different things that are like, that'll make people say like, wow, that's different. I want to try that. That sounds good. So I really try to stay away from every, what everybody else is doing. Like even when customers tell me like, you should do this, you should do that. You know, I went to this restaurant, they had this and that. I try to stay away from it because I don't want to be like other restaurants. I want to have different items so people can say okay that's the only place i can go to get that not like right. i have i want to go get this one thing okay i got like seven different options um because like mcdonald's burger king covers it's all like the same thing pretty much i mean it may not right. be the same taste but they got the same items so i just want right. to be different and have different items that people can so, have different choices and everything so you ask the one question go go ahead go ahead Oh, yeah. So you telling me your food is what separates you from the others. So, you know, when you watch those uh, those shows where the guys go around and they taste food, right? And you ever you ever watch those shows? Everybody has. I'm pretty sure it's, um, I don't know, the Food Channel, the Food Network. And they, they bite into some, you know, fresh and they be like, oh, my God, the juices is dancing on my tongue palate. Is that your restaurant? When we go there, <laughs> is it like boom like when you because you keep talking about these egg rolls so that must be like the hottest thing <laughs> i tell you you must bite on one of them egg rolls and it's just make me fly back to chicago i'm from chicago so you <laughs> tell me i'll be flying back to chicago with make, egg roll. make you want to <laughs> slap your mama <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so that's what yes. it sounds like yes definitely um everything that i make i make it fresh um fresh ingredients um my sauces i make my sauces from scratch you're not gonna catch me with no sweet baby rays and no cup giving it to you everything is from scratch even my sauce for my from for the egg rolls it's like a sweet and sour jerk sauce i make it from scratch like i don't wow. take nothing from no bottle and give it to nobody because if you if i'm gonna do that they might as well go to the store and buy it like what's the purpose of something i'm selling in my restaurant that i supposedly created like well, I have some some Heinz or some Sweet Baby Rays in my restaurant. I want something different that's going to stand out. And people, like you said, people going to be like, wow, I got to go back and get some of that. Okay. Okay, my question, my question for you next is, um, you know, one of the things I always hear with uh, Black uh, business owners is that either their friends or their family is always looking for a discount, always looking for the free free. Are you... Mm -hmm experiencing right off top any of those problems and how do you handle it i would say not when i first started maybe within a year or so people family not family no family don't ask for discounts even like my close family they pay me for food but friends yes yes they they want the Oh yeah, you my bro, you my sis, you, you you gonna hook me up? No, this is how I pay my bills. So no, you can't get a discount. You can't go to McDonald's and say, oh, let me get 20% off or let me get 30% off because you know somebody in there, you can't do it. So that's the same way I conduct my business as if it's like a chain restaurant, you know, you can't go in there and negotiate in prices and everything. I have had some people that aren't even my friends, like just random people that I don't even know. They try to like negotiate prices, round off prices, something maybe like $31. They, I only got $30. Well, you don't have a meal. I can't help you. <laughs> my prices are my prices. I can't, um, you know, give out discounts or whatever to people unless it's something that I want to do. I do have coupons, you know, for repeat customers who have shopped with me like, you know, more than two, three times. I give them coupons with like 10% off, 50% off. I have birthday discounts. But yes, people definitely, especially like our people, especially they try to, you know, you my bro, you my sis, pull that card. 
you know, hook me up. They want a discount. But they, I feel like they should just respect your brand, respect your business, just as anybody else's, just like any other, you know, company that's higher up. Yep. I agree. And that lead, that kind of leads right into the next question was that, do you feel that, uh, <clears throat> that we just go say our people since we talking about black people, do you think black people hold uh, black businesses at a different standard than they do, let's say, uh, uh, Big chain, going, a big, big box. chain restaurant. If we was going to a China buffet or something, and versus coming to you, do you think they hold you to a different standard? Um, sometimes I do think they do because a lot of black businesses, it's sad to say, they have like negative reputations, um, like for certain reasons one of the reasons we was things we were talking about earlier about customer service how they respond to different things so some people they may go in already on the defense like okay i know it's gonna be bad service it's gonna be this way it's gonna be that way so they already they already have this like negative thing in their mind so even if you do um do not meet their standards like they're gonna you know, go off about it. They're going to put you on blast, put you on social media, but like, it could be like a higher, like a different corporation, billion dollar corporation. They, they're not going to do that. They're not going to go on social media and talk down about, um, what's a restaurant? Benny Hanna's. They're not going to yeah, go on there and talk about Benny Hanna's. Oh, Benny Hanna's did this. Benny Hanna's food wasn't cooked. They, but it's always, well, not always, but for the most part, they're going to, like, go hard on black businesses because I feel like they do, like, hold them to a certain standard sometimes. Um, so, yeah, I do think they, they do. Uh, you know, me personally, I, I, you know, nobody's off limits. Anybody can get it. If you check my Twitter, I, I get McDonald's to business probably once a week because <laughs> that shit is becoming trasher by the day, okay? McDonald's, y'all need to close 50% of them motherfuckers or come up with a new menu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you got anything else for? Yeah. Um. So on your, on your menu, right? So I'm going to stick to your menu. You up and coming. I want the people to know. So let us know some of the hottest items on your menu or either the best thing you feel that's on your menu. Let us know what's different about it. You know, this is your creation and, you know, come and get it. Um, I've said this like three, four times. The egg rolls is the number one seller right now. Um, so the different egg rolls that I offer are Italian beef egg rolls, which is pretty much similar to... If you ever have Portillo's, I'm sure a lot of y'all have had Portillo's. If you haven't, you missing hey, out. But hold on, one, hold on one second. You know we from the West Side, so you you said what was the name of the uh, egg roll? Italian beef egg roll. We from the West Side. It's Italian beef. Yep. <laughs> it's Italian beef. Hey, and, 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 and we say, let me get that foot long Italian beef roll. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On, on four nail. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, got that sauce on that boy, too. <laughs> but what else you got? So, yeah, um, Italian beef rolls is pretty much similar to Portillo's. It's not biting Portillo's recipes or anything, but um, that's how I would explain it. Like, if you ever had Italian beef, you would like the egg rolls. Um, jerk chicken egg rolls, jerk shrimp egg rolls. We have veggie egg rolls for those that don't eat meat. Um, buffalo chicken egg rolls, which is one, personally one of my favorite. Um, it's kind of like that one there, I would say, um, real, like you were saying earlier, it explodes in your mouth. It's one of those things. The cheese, the <laughs> buffalo sauce. <laughs> the cheese, the buffalo sauce. It's just, it's, it's satisfying. It's it's Ooh. filling and it's satisfying. And you would mm. think of like an egg roll as kind of like a side dish. These egg rolls, you can eat them as an entree. Like people just order the egg rolls. They might order six to ten egg rolls, and that's filling enough for your dinner. Like so, you you saying basically, um, your menu will be non traditional. Yes, definitely. Okay. It's okay. not a. 
it's not a place that's just gonna have like basic things um hot dogs burgers fries everything that i created kind of has like a little twist to it so when people come to your restaurant once you open is it a uh is it like a um sort of like a patillo's but not that but that style you know people go in there grab food and go or is you go have like dinner menus uh-huh. You know, let the people know. Can they come in there and order a steak with potatoes? So, it's going to be similar to, if you ever been to Culver's, um, it's similar to that. You go to the register, you order your food, they give you a number, and they will bring your food to the table. But we do not have um, waiter waitress staff. You, It's pretty much self-service, so you can dine in. There are going to be seats where you can dine in. TVs, a little entertainment, music going on um, to enjoy the ambiance. And steak, no, we don't have steak, but one of the items I do have on my menu, um, which is going to be a special item, which is going to be every like now and then, is rack of lamb with a special sauce that I glaze the lamb with. Um, Describe this garlic. special sauce. Mm. I'm sorry. Dancing Descri- on your palates. Describe this special sauce. Because <laughs> um, la- la- lamb is one of my favorites. <laughs> you got any so, vegan chops? <laughs> vegan no, chops. No, we don't have too much vegan food. <laughs> but um, the special sauce, this is a special sauce. I cannot give the ingredients, but it is like a sweet um kind of sauce. It's not too sweet. And... The lamb is glazed in the sauce, and it just adds more flavors to lightly, like, li- lightly glazed or or completely covered. It depends on your preference. You can get extra sauce, or you can get you know lightly glazed. I don't put too much because some people they don't like real saucy food, so I have to you know find somewhere in the middle to meet people. And you know you can get extra sauce if you if that's what you like. But yeah, that meal is like a special meal. Rack of lamb, garlic mashed potatoes, and asparagus. And they're going to be like... We're going to have to bring her back for the taste test. part two. I'm going (laughs) to overnight you your lamb. I'm going to fly in. Oh, my man! (laughs) We all... (laughs) We all... We all all quarantine, so I'll be flying back (laughs) in pretty soon. And we're gonna okay. have a taste test. I'm gonna have a taste. We're gonna have a taste test. Hey, this I can I can it's like I already taste it the way she's describing it. I mean I can taste it like woo. You know what I'm saying? And I do not right now, not yet, but coming soon, I will have something special for people who are outside of Illinois. With the egg rolls being such a popular item, um, they do have egg rolls and things. You know how you go to the grocery store and they have things in the frozen section. I plan to have my egg rolls um, frozen and be able to ship to different states for people who want to try them because I do have, you know, people who request it who are out of town all the time that, you know, they can't just pull up to the restaurant and get some. So I do plan to um, have those shipped out as well for people who are out of town so they can experience it as well. Okay. That's that's good. So is there anything would you like to tell? You want to ask another question? One more question. Okay. okay. I would I would like to know what is your ultimate goal um with this business? Do you see yourself breaking off and having a second restaurant and doing something different? Or, you know, what do you plan on what's your goal? What's your long term goal as far as the restaurant business? Long term, um, slash near future goal. After this restaurant is open, I do plan to open a second restaurant. Um, The second restaurant will have its own like different unique style to it. It won't be like the exact same restaurant. Um, A lot of people, they really like my um, tacos that I make. I make a lot of different tacos. So I kind of want to turn it into a taco spot with different kinds of tacos. I do jerk chicken tacos, buffalo chicken tacos, um, shrimp tacos. So I kind of want to turn it into like an East by Marie taco spot um, to do something different, but kind of what a lot of people are, are requesting from me. So I kind of want to open that second spot up 
within probably two to five years after this restaurant is open. Do you uh will this will this uh taco restaurant have pinko de gallo? What? <laughs> yes, pinko it will. That, that's what it's <laughs> yes, called, right? It Say it again though. Yes. Hey, I do not have an ounce of a, a Latin blood flowing through me, okay? I'm not the Latin, I'm not the Latin love, I'm the African Mandingo. Hey, <laughs> when you go to Puerto Rico, you say you got salsa that what is that? We eat salsa anyway. They don't they don't do none of that over there, dog. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, but to answer your question, yes, I do have pico de gallo, and of course, it's made fresh. I also mm -hmm. have a pineapple pico de gallo as well, and a mango pipe pico de gallo. <laughs> Everything is fresh. You probably just eat that peach, uh, peach pineapple, what'd you say? Mango? You can just eat that by yourself. <laughs> pineapple pico de yeah. gallo. Yeah, a lot of people, they just ordered that for Cinco de Mayo. I had a special Cinco de Mayo menu, and people, they want to pico de gallo and chips, guacamole and chips. So I do a lot of different things. I try to branch oh. out and, you know, branch out to different cultures, reach people who like different foods. Okay. Okay, so is there anything you want the people to know about your business coming from yourself? The name, the name of it, how soon do you expect it to be open? things of that nature the name of my business is eats by marie east with a z um i see my business opening this summer late summer probably july i'm currently working on um getting things built out inside the restaurant i have to you know go through different you know regulations with the city and follow protocols and everything and get things set up accordingly. So it's looking like July or so. Um hopefully whenever, sooner, maybe. Whenever the pandemic is going, right? Exactly. It's it's small things that I can do currently while we're going through this, but it's not like I can just bam, open the doors, we ready to go. Yeah. It's gonna take a little time. But I am working right now getting things done. Um restaurant is already painted. So I have to, you know, get people in there and do some work. But restaurant is located 13055 South Ashland Avenue, and that's in Calumet Park. So you can follow my social media pages at East by Marie, East with a Z on Instagram and Facebook. And that's where you can find my menus, pictures of food. If you just want to look at food, drool over food, order it. Um, but yeah, that's where you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at East by Marie, East with a Z. Okay, okay. So you heard it here first. Three the hard way TV. The lovely Tiffany was on here promoting her business, East by Marie. If you fly in from anywhere, check out her Instagram. That's East by Marie. Check out her Facebook, East by Marie. The building might not be open, but the food is still hot. Hit her up and get your son. <laughs> hey, you can still get it. If you're on the west side of Chicago and you're checking out this video. Hit her up, East by Marie. She do delivery. Check the food out. Leave us some messages under this video and let me know how it tastes. I'm not there, but I'll be there <laughs> checking out those egg rolls. My man Dion, have you ate anything from it yet? Yes, I, I did. I did have the egg rolls. I did a, uh, I did a video that I wasn't too pleased with myself, but I, I'll get some more food and kind of do like a muff bang style thing. I'm waiting on the quarantine to be over so I get the ladies to join me and we eat and we're going to rate it and uh, different things like that. Okay. Okay. So my man already tried it. I know he knows it's good because I seen that video with him eating those two different egg rolls. <laughs> I seen him. <laughs> he didn't want to show his face because was, they was dancing on his palate. But like I said, you heard it here. <laughs> He's I saw <laughs> Also, um, if you're watching this video, I want to do something special for y'all. If you see this video and you place an order with me, mention Three to Hardway TV, you will get 10% off your order. Woo! Yeah. We made it! <laughs> we made it! We made it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Get those and rolls. You heard it here first. <laughs> That's gonna be the link below. Oh! We got jerk chicken egg rolls, buffalo chicken egg rolls, Italian Tie beef egg beef. rolls, Italian beef, Soldier Gallo. Hey, hey, and the best thing of all, they made fresh. Get yes, at it. Everything Eats is fresh. by Marie. Instagram, Facebook. If, if you can't get a hold of them, hit up Three the Hard Way on Facebook, Three the Hard Way TV. Let us know. We'll get in touch with her. Peace.